got a water damage ceiling we're going to repair and I'm going to take you through the whole process. So it's probably about a two to three foot by two to four foot square we're going to cut out. First I'm going to cut out a inspection hole where I can make sure there's no duct work or electrical wires or anything crazy up there. There probably isn't. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just cut out a section where I can get a flashlight up there and see what's going on, see if there's any wires, see if there's what's rotted, what's not. This is pretty solid, so I'm not sure you know, how much needs to come out, but I'm just going to make a hole and assess it and go from there. I'm just going to go real shallow, not much thicker than the half inch or five eighths drywall. That way I don't hit any, if there is anything up there, I don't want to poke it. Let me know in the comments if you're a DIYer, contractor, painter, just kind of curious. Probably going to go about 12 by 12. Again, I'm going real shallow, so I'm not really going to cut into anything, duct work or anything like that. It's crucial not to. So there's this uh, furring strip in the ceiling right, right about here, and there's one over here. So I measured from the center of each furring strip, which is 16 on center, which is a normal measurement. So I'm pretty confident there's another furring strip 16 inches over here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of remove some of this garbage and cut the tape that's in the angle or in the corner. Just going right along, right in the corner. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more of these type of videos. We're gonna try and not go down on the wall. If I just pull out the corner tape, you're gonna have this much on the wall. So that's scored. I'm gonna get some measurements on the wall here and then square this up with a level. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark where I wanna go to. There's a furring strip right here. So I'm gonna carry that mark through over to the wall and right up here where I know I'm gonna cut. So I'm gonna do the same over here on this side. I made the mark here, just guesstimating. So now I can know for sure I'm gonna go shallow. And there's the edge of so actually I can go over a little bit for my final measurement. I'm going to eyeball that. I have some room to play with with the fern strips. Doesn't have to be exact, but it's nice to know exactly where the framing member is. So we're going to want to come out from the wall, I'd say 32 inches. Then I'll make a mark over by my measurement, 32. And I'll do one more over here. Then I'll take my level and level it up. Straight on, I can see better where the marks need to be. 
So I'm just going to compensate. All right, so that'll be my final measurement. 32 and a half by 32. What I'm going to have to do is use a razor knife to cut where the furring strips are because I cannot use the keyhole saw. Hopefully there's no screws or nails in this area. It'll dull the blade. Basically you just want to follow the line and keep going over it. If you're working on a ceiling you always want to wear your safety glasses and stuff like this, a mask. Now it's starting to pull easier, so I know I'm pretty much all the way through. Helps to have a nice sharp blade. Alright, I'm going to just follow the line again like I did over at the same spot, the other side. I can feel that's gone all the way through. All right, so I should be able just to pop it loose from this hole and to carry it all the way through. That doesn't look too bad. As you can see, there is wires, just not where I was cutting. They kept them above that, which is good. But you never know what's up in the ceiling. Okay, I already installed the drywall, so I'll leave a link to a video where I show how to cut the drywall and install it. What I'm gonna do is pre-fill the gap around the repair with some 45 minute quick setting joint compound. Comes in a powder form. I'm gonna use my four inch knife to mix it up. Got a little water going to add a little bit. The key is you don't want it to be too loose. You want it to be a little thicker to fill this gap. So I'm just going to start mixing it up. Going back and forth. You don't want to mix it too soupy. So if you need to add water, that's fine. You just don't want to have too much water to start off with. You just kind of smush it out. A little more water. I like to use a, a container so I can control it better. I just scrape it off the edges. Just want to get all the lumps out. It's easier to get the lumps out when you mix it thick. 
All right, so you want to let it sit for one minute and then remix to the consistency that you want. Okay, it's been one minute. I'm not even going to add any water. If, if I was doing joints or something else, I would, but I'm just going to go with this thick. I just want to mix it up a little bit one more time. Super thick. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-fill all these gaps before I do the tank work. First, I'm gonna, since it's a pretty heavy texture, I'm just gonna go around and spot. Pre-filling the joints helps ensure that you're not gonna get any cracks on your repair. All right, now what I'm going to do is where this peeled back, if you look, I can't see it. it's, it's a dusty surface, so what I'm going to do is just wet it with a sponge, lock down that dust. going to go over it. Holes coated. I'll let this dry for about 30 minutes and show you the next step. All right, so I'm just going to scrape it off any any high areas or ridges. Hold my pan under it. The reason I like using the quick setting mud is because it's stronger in the gaps, and also you can start doing the mud work a lot sooner than if you used a pre-mixed joint compound. You're going to want to pay special attention to the corners. That way when you're finished with your repair you have a nice crisp line on the corner. For ceiling repairs, I like to use a FiboFuse drywall tape. It's great for laying flat and also is crack resistant. So that's what I like to use for ceiling repairs. And for the corner, I'm gonna be using a paper tape, which gives you a nice crisp line when it's all said and done. For the joint compound, I'm gonna use a USG all-purpose joint compound I like to use that especially for the first coat because it has a lot of glue in it so it adheres to a painted surface and to the joints real good. What you want to do is just add a little bit of water and get it a little more thinned out because when you're bedding the tape you want the joint compound to kind of soak in to the fiberfuse tape. All you want to do is just kind of go back and forth just kind of smush it against the side, taking it off, doing it again. You don't want to add too much water initially because it could get too soupy. Just add water as you go. You want to get it to a thick yogurt-like consistency to bed the tape.
Just keep mixing until everything's uniform. One thing I wanted to mention is that the Fiber Fuse is a fiberglass matte drywall tape, not to be confused with a fiberglass mesh drywall tape. I'll have a link in the description to my Amazon Influencer store where you can check out all the tools I use in this video and all the other videos I have on YouTube. So basically I'm just getting a thin coat along the whole joint where I had pre-filled before. As you can see, I'm placing the mud to, to be able to control it a little better so I'm not making a big wide swath over the joint. You wanna keep your mud to a minimum, but probably about a 16th of an inch thick to bed the tape in. I'm just going around getting that up. Gonna smooth it out a little bit. You wanna keep it pretty consistent. You don't want any humps or bumps. Just light pressure as you go. Then you take your fiber fuse and just kinda of roll it out. Pull it tight to the wall. You don't want any sagging in it or anything. And then take your six inch taping knife and it tears real easy. Then you want to start in the middle and go one way and come back the other way. This prevents the tape from crinkling and moving. And then once you get it bedded, you want to go over it another time just to kind of smush out any of the excess joint compound. So I'm going to do the same thing over here on the other joint. Needed a little bit more mud. Smooth that out a little bit. Just going to pull the tape tight. I'm actually going right up to the other fiber fuse tape that I just tore. Get a lot of questions about how far over do you overhang it. And then again, going to tear it out. Super simple. Tears easy. Start in the middle. Then start in the middle and go the other direction. Now this is a pretty heavy textured ceiling, so I'm gonna pay special attention to how the mud goes over the texture. I don't want any big blobs or a bunch of mud building down the repair. All right, on this last flat joint, I'm just gonna get another layer of mud over here over the pre-fill. And then just Place the tape where I want it, keeping an eye on where that joint is, and put the tape centered over that. And then I'm going to tear it with my knife, and then go from the center one way, and then back the other way, and then across the whole repair. Clean that up a little bit. Hit those screw holes one more time. You just want to pull most of the mud right back off. It will fill if there's a divot, if you go lightly over it and remove the excess joint compound. Go around one more time, just making sure everything's nice and tight. This is going to yield a perfect repair. No humps, no bumps. That's what you're looking for when the repair is completed. You don't want to see humps and bumps. I'm sure everyone's seen a crappy ceiling repair. So I'm going to... Use paper tape for the corner. I just want to go out right to the edge and just tear the paper, then fold it. This is basically the same concept as the flat tape joints, except you don't want to pile the mud up in the corner. You want to pay special attention to the corners always because you definitely want a nice crisp line. So. I'm just adding the joint compound, probably a sixteenth of an inch thick, maybe a little thicker. I'm going to get it on both sides of the joint where the wall meets the ceiling. So you want to keep it nice and smooth, light pressure so you do leave the joint compound for the tape to bed in. Then you take your tape, stick it in the seam. And just you can you can move it back and forth before you press it down or even after you can adjust a little bit before you wipe it with your knife. You want to take your finger, just run it down the edge. And then again, start in the middle and go one way at the bottom, then in the middle, go the other way. Same thing up top. Start in the middle, go one direction, 
go back to the middle the other direction. That little spot's not going to matter. We've got two more coats and a skim coat going on. So basically, you just want to smooth it out. And there's your corner. All right, so here's the repair. We've pre-filled before we did the tape work. Then we used the FibaFuse drywall tape. So the first thing I'm going to do is scrape any high spots just lightly. I'm going to tear into the tape. Okay, so next you want to take your 12 inch knife and lay it across the tape joint and see exactly how much of a hump is there created by the drywall tape. It's normal for there to be a little bit of a hump because you're building on top of a flat surface, which basically you're going to have three butt joints. So wherever you see the daylight, you just want to go ahead and put a mental note that you're going to need to add more mud in that area and I'll show you how coming up. You could also mark it with a pencil if you really wanted to know exactly where it was and not have to rely on your memory but it's usually pretty much the same thing every time you just want to make sure you don't have too gigantic of a hump. Nice and flat right here. All right so this is crucial. I'm going to show you how I put the joint compound on my taping knife to do the next coat. So all on one side, I'm gonna keep it as thin as possible right here on the tape. And this is after going another direction. I'm gonna do it that way. Keeping it thin as possible in the center of the tape. You wanna build it out on both sides. Joint compound on the side is minimal amount of joint compound in the center on the tape. We're trying to fill and make it flush. Right, once, you, once you got your mud up, you can smooth it out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put pressure on this side of the knife and pull and just let this float over the center. Do the same on the other side. Pressure on the left side of the knife and let this float right over the center of the tape. I'm gonna do this side over here next. Minimal in the center. Just gonna go over it one more time. Make sure I have enough mud to pull. Going on the left side, minimal in the center. One more time, just to fill. All right, so I'm gonna go pressure on the right side, floating on the left. This time pressure on the left, floating over the center of the tape on the right. Same thing down the center here. side of the knife. And apply the pressure over here, center tape, right in the center, keep it light. Applying very light pressure. All right, so I'm gonna get over here at the, the corner. 
All right, I'm just gonna go super tight right on the tape where it doesn't have joint compound. I'm not gonna mess with what's wet. If you do, that's okay. So again, I'm say, using the same application of, pr I'm putting pressure on the right and floating the left so I don't leave any knife marks when I go across this tape. And I'm gonna do the opposite right here. I'm gonna do the bottom side of this now. I'm not gonna go all the way up and get in this mud at all. Just gonna get a little bit on the tip. Stay down about an eighth to a sixteenth of an inch. We'll catch that on the next coat. Make sure you have plenty of joint compound where you need it. All right. Pressure on the left, floating on the right, no knife marks. All right, so I did the mud work on the repair. I'm gonna let that dry. To see how I skim coated this entire ceiling, I'll leave in a link in the YouTube card above now. And if you wanna catch the next video or any of my upcoming videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button now in the center of the screen to keep up with all my videos. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. I'll leave some of my most popular video links down below in the description. Thanks so much for watching.